Exactly, 730, 92.1, WROI, WROI, FM.com, RTC, Channel 4, and we welcome Scott Sager to the studio this morning. And on your smartphone device, go to TuneIn Radio, and there we will be. Well, of course, time for the First Federal Program. Dick Belcher is here from First Federal Savings Bank. Good morning. We got on on time? We did, perfectly, Ooh. perfectly. Well, you talk about the smartphone, you know what Santa called it. No, I don't. Well, he had a, he has a dumb phone. He does. Remember? Yeah, that's right. He does. I remember yeah. that from last week. Yeah, he was just here last week. <laughs> going to be forty three tomorrow. Yeah, going to be a little warmer. Going to warm up. Yeah, no cool down again. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that the Federal Reserve started a hundred years ago this week? I did not. Some will say that was a mistake. <laughs> I was going to say, is that a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> that that was the case. Well. Speaking speaking of dates, uh, we have John Alley on here. He's he's the guru from Woodlawn Hospital. He knows morning, everything. John. Good morning. Morning. Glad to have you with us. Pleasure to be here. How much of a pleasure is it? <laughs> you know, I mean, my, the, I've been at work for an hour already, so well, you know, at least he's time, dressed, time he's, for a break. He's dressed for the occasion. We'll say that. For yeah. Him. <laughs> right. Got it. Clean shirt on. I clean I clean up pretty I, well, don't I? Yeah, tie. Christmas yeah. tie, kind of. So. Well, anyway, uh, our our trivia this morning is uh, what year did uh, was Woodlawn Hospital founded? Ah, <clears throat> and also what year did First Federal open up? Uh, in what month? Ooh, I should know that by now. Yeah, you should. I should yeah. know that by now. <clears throat> First Federal was it uh, 1914, 48, or 66? Okay. <clears throat> well, all I have to do is come up with a year. I can do that. And Woodlawn. Uh, 05 around there okay. and uh, 018 and <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. well we'll take that under advisement how's that now the the real trivia that we had this morning what's the most popular dog name that, for the past year right male and female I just saw that the other day too Did that you, was listed you, in you USA remember today. what it was no I wasn't impressed I wasn't either <clears throat> My dog's name's Credit. Yeah, that yeah, you have a nice name for your yeah. dog. Yeah. yeah. What's your dog's name? Cuddy. Huh? Cuddy. Cuddy. C U T T Y. Yeah. Okay. Do yeah. You have a dog, John? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Poor thing. Yeah. When when I was a kid, the only way I'd get the dog to play with me, I'd have to put a pork chop in my pocket. So it's, <laughs> I, as I grew up, I got tired of carrying pork chops. Okay. But uh, at the Woodlawn Cafeteria, you can probably get a good supply. There. We can, sure can. <clears throat> well, in the sports field, Notre Dame versus Rutgers in the New York City Pinstripe Bowl tomorrow. Whoopee! <laughs> now, now, are those players going to have to wear uh, pinstripes? I don't have any idea. Also, I see you wear Michigan State, who's playing in the Rose Bowl, first time in 26 years. Captain was suspended. Well, really, I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, they can't divulge. Okay. What it was. Okay. Yeah. How, how stupid can you be? Well, I mean that's pretty silly. I mean he's a senior, he's right. been captain two two right. years. Right. And he probably went out and had a few drinks and celebrating not a good, not a good thing to do or something. Okay. LeBron James is the male athlete of the year. Serena Williams is the female. Okay. Do you agree? No. Who would you vote for? Peyton Manning. Yeah. Okay. How about without without a doubt, I would vote for Peyton Manning. How about the lady? Uh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She had a good year in tennis. Yeah. You know. All right. Colts are playing at uh, playing Jacksonville Sunday. Lucas Oil Stadium. I see you got a big cold sign. I do. Where yeah. did that come from? I've had that for uh, several years now. You just the boys at Fans of Lumber actually cut that out for us, and then we put the lights on it. You're giving them credit. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Big Ten basketball season opens this week. Okay. Purdue uh, Tuesday plays Ohio State. You. Their basketball team though will be better than the football team, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. IU is at Illinois. Okay. And that basketball team will be better than their Illinois than, than, the, <laughs> well, no, than their football team. I don't okay. Know about Illinois. IU. Yeah. So, 
Well, some upcoming events. The Fulton County Museum hosts singers from 6 to, to uh, p.m. to midnight, December 31st. Uh, the uh, to celebrate the new year, attendants are asked to bring food to share. Donations and canned and, or box goods and paper products are also collected to be donated to the food pantry. January is National Blood Donors Month, and at Woodlawn Hospital on January second, uh, they will take be taking blood there. Nice of you to open up your facilities. It's, it's a good service, and uh, you know we help keep the blood bank supplied because you just never know at what point if you're in an accident or have some medical emergency you might need some blood so it's nice to come in donate that way there's plenty of reserves on file and if you need it or a family member it's readily available. John that's a Thursday do you know what hours? I don't know what okay. the hours are right. on that it's usually in the afternoon okay. sometime but I'm not sure what exact times. Any, any Anything ahead of time people need to do like not really. Uh, it's okay. just uh, you know, uh, the, I know the Red Cross would like if you can kind of maybe call them and say, "Yeah, I'm coming in." Okay. So they can kind of have an idea how many folks are going to be showing up. Now, when you when you give, you get a two ounce brick of Dunkin' Donut coffee plus wow. a coupon for a pound of coffee. Makes it worthwhile, then, doesn't it? Absolutely. Right. <clears throat> now, John, is there anything to the rumor around town that there's a direct? bloodline from where that's given down to the surgery no no that's we, we've tried to figure out how to put that in place and it just doesn't work so uh, it, no. all the blood has to be screened processed okay. so they take it to the lab and okay. package it and freeze it and keep it for future use Akron Lions Club will be selling uh, fried uh, fish uh, seven dollars a pound four to six p.m. on January 18th the first baby uh, 14 contest is coming up. Starts January 1st. Yes, it Can does. Can you imagine that? I now, the baby's got to be born in Woodlawn. Correct. Right. Can't be out. Right. Someplace mm -hmm. else or some other. Hospital. Sometimes that right. takes it takes a day or two. Sometimes it takes a day or yeah. two. We were kind of looking at the schedule, and I think uh, we have plenty of candidates coming in this year. <laughs> good. Uh, schedule kind of looks full for anticipated delivery. That's date. good. I noticed some of the prizes that our merchants are giving. Quality Oils giving a free oil change. Okay. I thought it might be better if they give a free baby change. <laughs> and my, the they mom, change the baby when they get your oil change like in the car. Better. Artist Linda Leisure and her granddaughter, Skyle, are showing their work at the Fulton County Public Library through January. They're also available 1 to 3 p.m. tomorrow for a meet and greet. I saw the news this morning where Purdue's cutting fees again. This is this time it's on uh, dorms, okay, about two and a half percent, and and on the cafeterias. That's five, a good thing. Five percent. Mitch is intense on keeping the cost of education. Yeah, he really is. So, <clears throat> well, let's uh, offer our condolences to the family of Larry Carr, who passed away last weekend. Larry was former president, local bank president and uh, here in Rochester and also in some other towns and communities. Did a lot of work in this community uh, with the Chamber of Commerce and church and other things. And our condolences to the Carr family. Also, Bob Ulrich passed away on Christmas Day. Bob, a lot of people don't know Bob, but Bob was one of these guys that had a filling station here in town and always do good things for you went in there, he'd take care of you, and then he drove a school bus for 30 years. Bob was a good guy. Yeah. Really was. Yeah. So our condolences to the Bob Ulrich's family. Flowers. Good. I went by Kroger's yesterday, and the Salvation Army people are still out there. <laughs> They've been working hard through the holiday season. Yeah. I'll give them credit for that. They raised a lot of money and a lot of volunteers, and our, we need some... Uh, flowers for those bell ringers of which one was the governor yes he did he stopped by right how long do you think he was there oh I don't know 10 15 minutes maybe mm -hmm. yeah okay. okay money matters interest rates uh, up again this week and uh, that that's probably going to continue in 14 you know we talk, been talking about this for months and years when it'll turn around and uh, that's probably the case now 
Dow's yeah. pretty high right now. That's right. Dow closed up 122 yesterday at 16,479. Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is under money matters. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. Well, she's going to Vegas. <clears throat> You know how much she's going to get? I do not know how much she's going you to don't get. Know. No, three hundred thousand. That's all. <clears throat> That's almost as much as a CEO of Woodlawn Hospital makes. <laughs> well, who's the new guy then? <laughs> <laughs> who's the new guy? Okay. Well, come on down to First Federal. We're open eight thirty to five. Tuesday, we're going to close at two o'clock. Okay. That's New Year's Eve day. And, of course, be closed on Wednesday. Except the automatic teller will be open, right? Oh, yeah. Always. Working, even in the coldest of weather. <laughs> it's right there. Cold and, cash? And cold our cash. workers on our building are working the coldest of They weather. are. They're working yeah. this morning. They got a little insulation there. They're, they're <clears> doing <throat> a good they job. They got a tent up and heat in there. So we're going to pour that third floor uh, hopefully next week. Okay. So then, and then the roof. Then the rough, okay. And then they can start closing. Really it up. go after it. Yeah. Then. Okay. First federal is FDIC insured and equal housing lender, and the NMLS number is three nine or nine or nine or twenty seven. Right. We got that. John Alley, welcome. Good morning. How long have you been CEO of Woodlawn? I uh, started uh, CEO in two thousand six. Came in in two thousand five as the CFO. And then uh, when Mr. O'Keefe moved on, I assumed the position of uh, CEO. Well, you were handy. You were just across <laughs> the hall. Just across the hall, yes. Yeah. Well, Woodlawn Hospital in the last year, and actually the last five years since, uh, since, and since you've been there, have made lots and lots of changes and lots of things happening. So give us a, a few things that have happened, uh, positive things in the last uh, year. I think the last year some of the positive things that we've the whole staff has been working on is just you know that whole patient friendly um, it's very important that when you come to a hospital you usually don't come there just to visit you're either sick or a family member sick so what I want the staff to do is be able to relate to those folks either as a patient or the family members and show them you know some of the the respect that they deserve and make that stay slightly less stressful and it's just kind of nice. I roam the halls a lot and hear a lot of conversations and stuff. And it's nice to see the families interact with the staff and the patients. And I think the best part what we do, you're just not that person in room 210. We actually put a name to you and, and they know how many kids you have, what you know, your dogs, your cat name. The staff goes that extra mile. And I think that makes a difference in the whole healing process. If you're more relaxed and at ease, you, you tend to heal a little quicker. So uh, the staff does a wonderful job on that. Um, and bringing in quality physicians. That's been probably one of the, the toughest things is trying to get really good, high quality physicians to come to a rural atmosphere. And I think the Woodlawn's done a very good job over the past two to three years of recruiting some outstanding physicians who have the values that we're looking for. And again, we expect the physicians again to treat that patient as if it's their own family member. And they all do that, so it, uh, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to sit back and just watch how everybody works together and uh, truly care about the patient. It, it, that's the ultimate goal. Patient care has to come first in everything that we do. Well, tell us about the uh, Schaefer edition. Uh, what's over there, and what was the uh, motivation to uh, get that facility? There was kind of two motivating factors with that. Uh, one uh, was to move Rochester Orthopedics into a more patient-friendly atmosphere. The building that they would started off in and had been there for quite a while had served its purpose, but as we were seeing more patients, their ability to get in and out of that building was being compromised. Uh, there was a step up, they had to go through a couple doors, so it just wasn't very convenient if the, somebody was on crutches, in a wheelchair, or have a walker. So right, they, and if you didn't have a broken bone when you started in there, you, <laughs> you could by the time you finally got in. Yeah. So that was kind of one of our main goals, is let's see if we can get that into a more patient-friendly atmosphere. And they had grown. Uh, Dr. Rombach and Dr. Sheedy, their practice had grown to the point that they were pretty cramped in that building. So we started saying, let's find them another spot. And then, the, you know, kind of a secondary issue that as we're looking at some of the changes through healthcare, 
there is a, a, a financial incentive to get them moved a little closer to the hospital. Oh, wait a minute, a financial incentive. <laughs> yes, there How was. Does that work? There's a, a provision within some of the Medicare payment systems that basically if the physician practice is located within 250 yards of our main campus, they'll give us a little extra money for that patient visit. That sounds hokey. <laughs> Well, as long as they'll do it, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, that was another motivating factor to do that. And for us, it was a fairly big financial gain. Uh, you know, we're looking maybe three to 400000 additional dollars per year just by moving their location. So it was kind of a win-win. We was able to make it much better for the patients as far as extra space, more space for the staff, and also help bolster the financial position of the hospital by moving them into the Schaefer building. We're speaking this morning to John Alley, who's the Woodlawn Hospital CEO. I hear the ferries the critical care a lot, that Woodlawn is critical care. So what does that mean? We're, we're actually, it's, it's called Critical Access Hospital, and that's a provision within the federal government quite a few years ago that uh, they said, we will pay you 1% over your, the cost it takes to provide care to a Medicare beneficiary if you agree just to kind of reduce your beds. And so when back, I think it was 2002, Woodlawn made that conversion from a, uh, what's called a PPS hospital to a critical access. At that point, we had like 42 beds, but they were never being occupied. The, the trend has been to move away from an inpatient setting to outpatient. So by looking at the dollar incentive, it did make sense for Woodlawn to make that conversion and say, okay, we will restrict to 25 inpatient beds in turn, then the Medicare will pay us 1% over cost. So that has really helped, again, save some of the small rural hospitals who were seeing declining census. And under the old payment method of the PPS system, where it's just a flat rate, when you come in, if you have pneumonia, they said, we're going to pay the hospital, and I'm going to pick a number, you know, $2,000. That was it. So if your cost was 5000 you lost money. If your cost was 1000 you made money. At least with the critical access designation, we know on our Medicare population we're going to get 1% over cost. So it, it helps cover that cost so that the hospital can continue to operate. Is there ever a time when, you're, when you have a shortage of beds? We have come close a few times. Uh, you know, about two months ago, we, were up, we had 23 beds occupied. So then you really start you know, calling the physician's offices. We, we check with the ER folks and say, are you going to be sending somebody up? And are you going to be discharging? And we've, you know, if we see it's, we've got a patient that may be discharged in an hour or so, and we've got somebody in the ER, we might hold them in the ER just until that bed clears upstairs. Okay. But for the most part, our average daily census is running 16 to 18, so we have a little bit of a cushion. Plus, they have some army cots in a closet. <laughs> they really need them. Well, we do have some cots. They're not army cots, uh, but uh, they're not quite as comfortable as an inpatient bed, but they're close. So, okay. Now, John, what are some of the new services that Woodlaw has offered starting uh, three or four years ago up till now? I think one of the big things is uh, we've upgraded our, our CT scanner to be more diagnostic. Uh, the old CT scanner was very slow and had limited capabilities, so we decided as we wanted to progress and move forward, we needed that technology. So that was the first step in technology that we did to move up to a, a more uh, faster uh, CT scanner and allows us to do more diagnostic images. And how much does that instrument cost, that machine? <laughs> uh, it, it was about a million three, a million four. Just a nice round number. Nice right? round number. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know, and that's uh, I, and I don't get a break on the price because we're a smaller hospital, so it, you know everybody pays that same price. But that kind of opened the door for us to be able to provide more technology. So then we start building upon that, and then we went into some uh, uh, different ultrasounds where we're looking at it's called 4D, and I have no idea what that is, but it's a whole different technology as far as uh, using ultrasound for newborns and for other diagnostic tools. And then we went with the fixed site MRI again to help our physicians better treat their patients. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is, is coordination with the physicians. We don't buy a new gadget just because it's new. What we want to make sure is, is there a need for that in this community before we spend the money? So we get feedback from the physicians, what are you looking for? So it was just kind of that, that 64 slice CT scanner kind of started that trend to go to the higher technology, which allows us to bring in different services, different physicians, 
because we now better serve the population of Fulton County. Well, tell us about some of the doctors. Uh, some come in on a weekly basis, and you've hired some uh, on a full-time basis uh, to give better service. Right. We've kind of looked at one of our visiting physician groups is for cardiology services. And we have two groups come in. One comes in from South Bend, um, South Bend Cardiology, and the other one is used to be called the Care Group, and they've changed their name, but us, us old guys who've been in healthcare forever, they'll still be the Care Group to me. And they come out of the Indianapolis market. And again, that allows then the patient to have that choice. Do I want to go to Indianapolis? Do I want to go to South Bend? And they each come in one day a week, and we're looking maybe to even expand that because we're seeing now that that demand is a little higher. Uh, we also have... Uh, cancer group out of uh, Mishawaka comes down, uh, Michiana Hematology. Excellent addition to our medical staff. They're, they have quite a few offices around the state, so we've been able to bring those folks in and really up the services that we have in that area. Uh, we have urology come in. So what we look at is what are the needs in this community and we might not have enough of a demand for a full-time physician to be here, but if we can bring a physician in one day a week, two days a month, something along those lines, our patients can still get that service without having to travel and we don't have the expense of a physician basically sitting around with not they like to keep busy and they don't want to you know just sit around and not do anything. You have eye surgeons that come in too right? No we do not. Okay. That okay. Uh, I think that was prior to my arrival at the okay. hospital they kind of dropped that because again there was more there was some specialty clinics that all they did is the cataract surgeries and it kind of makes sense if that's all you do you sure. got to be very good at that so we decided that was maybe a, some business that is better going out to that person who specializes in it, that's all they do. And then we looked to bring in, uh, you know, Dr. Sheedy came in uh, to help with Dr. Rombach in the orthopedic area. Uh, got Dr. Aldridge, which was just an outstanding addition to our medical staff. And he's kind of our hospitalist. And what he does is allows our physicians to admit a patient to the hospital, and then he will follow that patient for them once they're discharged, then they're discharged back to their family practice physician. Uh, latest addition is Dr. Benfit, a new family practice physician that's located in the Schaefer building. Again, outstanding young man that uh, is just, it's a joy to work with and has a lot of fresh ideas and I, that helps a, an organization grow. We, you can kind of become stagnant if you don't bring in some new thoughts after, every now and then. And he and I spend a lot of time together and he says, can we do this? Can we do this? And uh, some things I say sure and some things I say no. And we kind of challenge our staff and our directors. One of the things that I say over and over to everybody is, I'd rather we try 99 times and fail than never try something different. If we try something that doesn't work, we mark it off the list, don't try it again, but let's keep moving forward. Let's find better ways to do what we do. And it keeps the, fr the staff involved. They feel like they have some input into what's going on in the hospital, keeps the directors involved and the physicians. So it's, it's kind of ever-changing. Every day we try something a little different, a little new. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, we move on to the next item on the list. Well, John, let's talk about acquisition. I hear this a lot. A lot of our neighbor uh, hospitals have been acquired by mm -hmm. some of the big hospitals, IU Health, uh, hospitals over in Fort Wayne. Uh, what what plans, if any, does Woodlawn have? Right now, we're in a fairly <laughs> decent position. Is that we really don't need anything from these folks. We're fairly self-sufficient. We've got a nice building. Our debt services, you know, we're not struggling with that. Our census is up, so we're doing quite well. So, as from an acquisition standpoint, we're not desirable to any of those organizations. They don't have anything they can offer to us. Some of those big hospitals are running out of money too. And they're running out of money. So it's, you know, and it's not always the best thing to be acquired by somebody else. When you start looking at some of the hospitals that were acquired five to seven years ago, they're not the hospital today they were seven years ago because services get pulled out because from a chain's uh, perspective, it makes more sense to consolidate their services and not have it spread over. So right now, I can't see Woodlawn Hospital being acquired. Now, 15 years from now, who knows what that healthcare environment is going to be like? But I, you know, we've positioned ourselves today to be very self-sufficient and strong for you know the next seven to ten years. I feel very comfortable with that. John, we had a question from a listener. If I could just interject sure. this quickly, they want to know if a new foot doctor is coming to town since Dr. Rogers has passed away. We've been putting some inquiries out okay. there and haven't had anybody kind of 
feed back to us. And one of the things that we were kind of sitting back and waiting was, wasn't sure what Mrs. Rogers was going to do. Was she going to try to sell the practice? Well, I think, you know, there's been an auction, so I'm not sure that that is an uh, available option out there now. Okay. So we might have to try to push that up a little bit. But what we're seeing is a lot of the podiatrists are very busy where they're at. And they say, I don't need to move. I've, I've got all the business I want. So it's something that is probably not top of my list. Uh, I actually need uh, you know, some family practice physicians. But as we're doing with our recruiters, we are looking to see is there a podiatrist that might be interested, if not full time, maybe just two to, two to three days a week come in on a visiting basis. So okay. it's something we've kind of ramped up a little bit in the past 30 to 60 days that prior to that we really had left it alone. So it's not, it's not out of thought, out of mind. We, we are starting to look at that and see if we can even just bring somebody in a couple days a week to help the folks here in Rochester. Okay, let's talk about health care costs. Okay. That's a hot button. That's a hot button, <laughs> yes. With the news, uh, Obamacare coming in, how's it going to affect Woodlawn? I think 2014 and 2015 will see very little change to, to what we're doing. As we move long term, I think it will be a benefit. Um, because what we're seeing right now is a lot of the folks who have no insurance, we're still treating them, so it's been basically a write-off for us where we write off 100% of that bill. As they start moving into some of the plans, we predict that there's still going to be quite a bit of write-off involved because if the, they pick the bronze plan, which has the highest deductibles and stuff, it's the lowest cost, but we still could see three, four, five thousand dollars of out-of-pocket expense for the, the patient if they can't afford it now, they're not going to afford it in the future. They're still going to, we're still going to be writing off those you know, early parts of the bills. But if they come in with something major, a very catastrophic illness, long term, then we should see a reduction in our bad debts because we're going to be seeing some payment for that back end of the bill. We'll still be writing off the front end. Uh, I know there's a lot of write-offs in the business. Tell us about that. Right now, and it's you know, if anybody in the normal business, if I tell them we write off 60% of what we charge. How much? About 60%. Of, so yeah. for each dollar that we bill, we write off 60 cents. So we're only collecting 40 cents on the dollar of what we bill. But that's not just Woodlawn necessarily. That's not that's Woodlawn. That's, that's, that's the industry in general. Exactly. And what has prompted that is over time, because of the discounts required by insurance companies and the Medicares and Medicaids, the cost of health care has been inflated. I have to raise my rates every year to make up for the money that I'm not getting. And years ago, one of my, uh, in college, which was a long time ago, uh, you know, the, basically my paper was if everybody paid 100% of what we build, we could cut all of our charges in half and most health care facilities would still make a 4 to 8% bottom line. So that's how out of control the whole process is. Uh, can we fix it? I can't see it being fixed in my lifetime, but it's uh, you know that's part of it. And it's healthcare is a hidden tax. We pay for those who can't pay because everybody that walks through our door we treat, whether you pay or not. So it costs money to do that. For so I, it's kind of I just call it it's a hidden tax. We all have to pay. When you go to that uh, hospital or your physician, you're going to pay for those your fellow residents who don't have the means to pay because we we're going to treat them no matter what. Woodlawn Hospital is a county hospital. We all own it. We all own it. It's uh, yeah. It's it's part of the community. It always has been. And my goal is it for always to remain a part of the community. And how are the finances? And uh, what kind of a year financially are we having? Very good year this year. Um, we've had some issues where we've been trying to collect some back money from uh, from Medicaid, and we finally got those monies in. But if, even if I take that out, we're still showing about a three percent margin. Bottom line, if I take out all of the, uh, one of my board members calls them rabbits. I, I won't point <laughs> fingers who that is, but uh, when we pull the rabbits out, uh, we still have about a 3 to 4% bottom line. This could be a very good year for Woodlawn Hospital uh, because of some of the Medicaid monies that we've collected. And also we've, we've looked for other revenue sources and we've partnered with some area of nursing homes throughout the state which helps bolster our bottom line and what we do, we help them with some of their education, uh, some of their quality issues, and in turn then we can we split some uh, federal dollars that's made available for that. Well John, since you've uh, been at Woodlawn, you certainly have improved the image and, uh, and created a lot more different, very competent services. 
uh, our community is really fortunate to have a hospital like we have. It, it's a, a hidden gem we have here in the community, and, and it, it's not me that did it. I made the suggestion. Okay. The staff's the people who did it. We just sit down, and they, they're the one that has fulfilled the mission. Credit where credit's due, right? Yes. Great, great staff that you have there. Thank you for stopping by, and have a good year in this coming year, and, and uh, keep on trucking, as they say. Sure will. Thank well, you. Well, our trivia this morning, what year was Woodlawn Hospital established, and that was 1905, okay. by Dr. Schaefer, Dr. I.E., that's, that's right. right, they have the Schaefer name on the building out there. It wasn't that he gave a lot of money. No. <laughs> at all. So, And First Federal was established January the 3rd. 1966, so that'll be coming up next week, our 48th anniversary. So, and if you're interested, the most popular name for dogs was Max and Bells. Bella, I should say. Okay. Bella. Mac, yeah, it was Max, wasn't it? For the, yeah. for the, for the male dogs. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. We didn't do that. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Let's close with this statement by Joey Adams. May all your troubles last as long as your New Year's resolutions. <laughs> well said. Dick Belcher, thank you very much. John Alley, thank you very much thank for being you. here on the First Federal Program.